Thanks everyone for jumping on. It's really cool that there's a split of you that are all new to Plastic Free July and there's some of you that have done it before. Um, the great way to start is obviously through looking at the stuff that you use day to day and trying to find alternatives for it. So tonight we're going to be doing deodorant, making deodorant and toothpaste. And the reason why I started looking into this stuff was because I found it um, when I started investigating not just where the plastic was going, but also the stuff like the the material, the the chemicals that we're putting on our bodies that we don't even know about. So one of the great um, additional benefits to not just only avoiding plastic, but also um, making your own stuff is that you actually learn what you're putting on your body. Your skin is your biggest organ and really anything that you're putting on it, you should be able to eat. Um, so when you think about a lot of the lotions and, you know, products that we do rub on our skin, um, a lot of it, like, I don't, I wouldn't feel comfortable eating and, um, you know, neither should you. So it's important to start thinking about um, the chemicals that we can avoid by also making our own, our own products. Because a lot of these recipes, they only have like two or three ingredients. Um, mm. And it's really clear where, what they are and um, where they come from. The other benefit is that you can save quite a bit of money. Um, some of the products will be a bit of a, a cost upfront. For example, for toothpaste, if you're going to use um, like charcoal or aloe vera uh, gel, some of those will come in larger tubs, which you'll have to upfront um, at first. But then you'll have those products for you know probably a couple of years to use in your in your recipes. Um, obviously you're also saving plastic which is really great um, and you know you'll be able to talk about it and share these recipes with your friends as well um, I my friend had a hens the other well before COVID and um, I ran this workshop for all the women at the hens and it was really fun so you know there's lots of different um, ways which you can incorporate this into your life um, and the other thing is about becoming self-sufficient. So we live in a world where, you know, we've got woolly holes maybe around the corner and it's very easy to simply go down and pick up some deodorant or toothpaste. But um, it's actually really, that's a really new uh, way of life really for, for humans. And uh, before our, like our grandparents, our grandmas and grandfathers, you know, they were really capable at, making a lot of the stuff and repairing the things that um, we used and it's a skill that it's a bit of a shame that we've lost so this is a really cool way to start to to bring that back into your everyday life and the other element is also you know keeping it local so the products that you're buying will usually pick up at a bulk food store and you can find out when you're buying these products where they actually come from it usually lists on the tub whether they're um, from Australia or from other countries and you usually have a choice of you know buying salt or um, you know some uh, um, spices or things like that that are from Australia or from international or from other countries so it's a really good opportunity to also buy stuff that's made in Australia because then it doesn't have the extra carbon miles on it so yeah there's a whole list of great reasons why I'm um, doing this sort of stuff is fantastic for you for the planet for everything basically so um, I thought let's get into it and start with um, the deodorant um, so I hope um, for some of you I, well you should have all received the ingredients list um, but for this we're going to use um, bicarbonate of soda um, coconut oil and arrowroot powder and then some essential oils so bicarb um, soda is actually a mined mineral so you want to be um, aware and mindful when you use it um, just about the quantities and that um, yeah that it's something that we mine um, the great thing about it is you can get it from Coles or Woolworths or any supermarket and it just comes in a cardboard box so um, and then coconut oil comes in a jar you can buy big jars of it um, you'll want Probably everyone's coconut oil tonight is pretty hard considering the, the temperature, but ideally it's a little bit warm so that it makes, when you turn it into, or when you um, 
blend it with a spoon and turn it into a paste, it, it happens a bit more quickly. But you don't want it to be a liquid. So you don't want to heat it up in the microwave and have it as a liquid because you do want it to be a paste. Um, and the arrowroot powder, uh, you can use arrowroot or um, tapioca powder. Arrowroot is simply, they're from a root um, vegetable. Um, and it's like a corn starch. So it's a really light powder. For some of you that have already got it, you may have realized that it puffs up if you like try and pour it out. So just be mindful when you're using it. Um, otherwise you can end up with it all over yourself. So it's much easier to spoon it out rather than pour it out uh, like the bicarb. So I've got um, a jar ready. I'm going to bowl that I'm going to mix it into a spoon and a measuring cup. So if everyone wants to grab their measuring cup, we're going to do a quarter of a cup of bicarb. So literally, and don't worry, this isn't like baking, so it doesn't have to be super precise. But yeah, so that's about a quarter of a cup of bicarb, which I'll just pour straight into the bowl. As I said, with the arrowroot powder, it's a bit, um, it's much easier to spoon it in. So this is a quarter of a cup again, so it's just equal parts bicarb to arrowroot. And pour that in. And then coconut oil. I've tried to have it near the heater, so it's a bit warmer but it is still pretty dry, uh, so pretty hard. So if you can get it out in little um, shreds rather than big clumps, that'll make it easier for you to mix it. So basically you want a third of a cup of coconut oil and this will make it um, into a paste. So I'll just put that up there. While you're spooning that out, AJ, we've got a question. You yeah. know if xanthan gum can be a substitute for arrowroot powder? I've never heard of that. Xanthan gum. Um, I'm sorry whoever answered that question. I can investigate afterwards. Um, but if, if it's a light powder, um, like a flour, but more like corn starchy, I'm sure it could be used as long as it's not too fragrant or um, strong on the skin but I'll look into it and we can send it um, an answer to you when we, uh, at the end, once we send out the email. So um, I've got about, well, actually I need a bit more. And uh, how much coconut oil goes in? A Is third it also of a cup. A third of a cup. And everyone will get the recipes after in the email too. So yeah, I've got about, it's a bit loose, but um, about a third of a cup there. So I'll just pour it on the top. Let's get a pot in here, just to get my scarf. Um, and then what you basically do, so I'm not sure if you can see it very well here, but you've got a mix of the arrowroot and you just use the back of a spoon and you push it and basically mix the coconut oil into the powder. So it takes about five minutes to do this. Um, and you'll see if it's a bit too dry, um, you can add more coconut oil. Um, or if it's too wet, you can add more um, Add more powder. So does anyone have any other questions? Because I'm just going to keep mixing this um, while I talk to you because it takes a little bit of time. Um, so Georgia has asked, how about corn flour? You could use corn flour. Um, I think corn flour usually comes in a plastic um, like packaging. So it usually comes in the, the plastic bag and then the um, 
and then it's in a box. So the reason why I usually opt for arrowroot or tapioca is because I can pick it up from a bulk food store in a jar. Hey, AJ, can I ask you a question? I'm quite curious about how long can it last? Like I always get like really excited about making my own stuff and then I go like, oh, but yeah, how, how long can I um, yeah, keep them for? So it really depends on where you store them. Um, I'm actually going to add some more coconut oil because uh, it's a bit too powdery. Um, you can, yeah, so it really depends on where you store it. If it's somewhere there it get, where it gets, uh, where it melts and then reheat, uh, melts and hardens, melts and hardens, then you're probably only going to want to keep it for about six weeks, if that. Ideally, you can, um, if you keep it in a cooler place, it really just lasts as long as you, until you run, it runs out. Um, so this amount here that I'm making is, will probably last about two months and you just use like a tiny amount. So, um, probably use about that much and divide it in half and then you can moisten it between your fingers and then rub it on underneath each of your armpits. And I always say a good way to try is put it, well, maybe not when you're going to work or something, but when you're on the weekend, you can try it on one underarm and then leave the other one without and see if it works um, for you. Oh, um, we also have another question from Georgia Douglas. She's asking if, um, does, it need to, does it need to be stored at a room temperature? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think it's a pain if you want if you have to put it in the fridge because you know that's not where you put deodorant on um, in the bathroom uh, in the kitchen. So um, <laughs> it's it's easier just to store it in the cupboard. Um, and um, yeah, and then if it melts and hardens too many times, I would just say um, just empty it out in the garden and let it melt into the garden. Don't put it down your sink because coconut oil does harden um, and you don't wanna block your sink. So that's yeah. with, the, with the toothpaste as well. I recommend, even though you only use such a small amount of it, um, you want to, um, yeah, ideally spit it into your bin in the bathroom rather than spitting it down the sink. Especially if you're on like uh, grey water or you have your own um, sewerage system and you're not on mains. Yeah. Um, we have another question. Someone, and this is actually quite a, a fair question. Um, a lot of the ingredients do come in, um, you know, plastic lined containers, bags. Um, do you know if they, if bulk stores are selling things like arrowroot powder? No, unfortunately the things like, um, oh sorry, arrowroot powder. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Bulk food stores um, sell arrowroot powder and if they either sell arrowroot or tapioca. Okay. So, so you yeah. Can, yeah, you can go in there, like I know like Naked, um, bulk food source, they all have it and then also, the smaller co-ops do have it as well, but they'll usually only store one. Okay, great. Um, does anyone have any questions for AJ at the moment? Um, if you do have one, please feel free to unmute yourself and um, ask questions. I am getting there, but as you can see, it does take a little bit of time to actually blend it into a paste. So you can see that it's starting to become, um, it's still quite crumbly, but you can see, I don't know if you can see very well, um, but it's starting to smooth. I think yeah. it's quite challenging to show you this on my webcam, but um, that's really what you want it to start to um, basically become a paste. So it takes a bit of elbow grease, um, but five minutes of work for two months of um, deodorant I think is not such a bad conversion. 
Um, we have a question from Jenny. Um, is it okay to use a blender to speed up the mixing? I don't think a blender would work. Why is that? Well, I think the um, coconut powder, the coconut oil is quite mm. clumpy and it really, it, it would just spin around. I've never tried it, um, but I don't think you'd be able to get it necessarily into a paste. Maybe something like a, um, like a cake mixer, but I still, again, you really need to just, um, it needs the pressure of being, so like my technique is basically like working my way, you can see that, around the wall of the, um, of the bowl and pushing the coconut oil into the powder. And so I, I think if you had a blender or a, um, like a mixer, it would just like mix, not mix it around rather than actually, because you don't have a whole lot of liquid to work with. Um, so it's really about trying to get the, the moisture out of the coconut oil, but without it being a liquid. Um, and I think also if you put a blender um, in with the arrowroot, it would just puff up everywhere and you'd lose half the, half the arrowroot powder over the kitchen or wherever you're making it. Um, we have more questions coming in. So is this a deodorant or an antiperspirant? Just my accent. <laughs> Trying to get the words right. <laughs> what was it? If is it a deodorant or an antiperspirant? I don't know what an antiperspirant is. Like um, it stops you from sweating. No, it doesn't stop you from sweating. It just like masks the smell. Yeah. Cool. So um, we're pretty much there on the. Um, on the paste so you can see that it's it's pretty much um, yeah I mean it still like goes into clumps but really um, it's a it's a paste not a powder anymore which is which is what you're going for so yeah basically just probably needs like another minute um, of mixing and yeah and then it's good to go. Um, can I ask you a few more questions AJ? Um, does the arrow root leave any white residue on your clothing? No, um, I've used it for the last five years and I have found as long as you um, rub it in really well um, and rub off any excess powder. It hasn't discolored my clothing. I had someone in a workshop say that they added um, like lemon juice or something to a deodorant before, and that stained that 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 had stained their shirt. Um, but I haven't found that this stains it. And what do you store it in it? Just in a jar. So I usually store it in a jar and then I have like a paddle pop stick um, or yeah, something similar that I can just dip into the jar and get a little bit out and then put it on my fingers and yeah. And I just store it under my sink. Um, I do label it because um, I've got a few jars under there and the coconut, sorry, the deodorant and the toothpaste look exactly the same. It doesn't really matter if you mix them up because you can eat them both. Um, but ideally using the toothpaste as toothpaste and the deodorant under your arms. That's interesting, just eating your own deodorant. <laughs> I've never heard that one before. <laughs> so this is done. Um, so you can see it's like a, can you see that? It's like a, I should have chosen a different colour bowl than white. Sorry, guys. Um, but yeah. It's basically a paste now. So you can see it like comes off as a paste. Um, and so what I'll do now is I'll just put it in my jar. Um. And one more question. What happens when the coconut oil liquefies in hot weather? Pardon? What like if the coconut oil melts, 
what happens to um, your product? I think it just, um, I don't know what exactly happens like chemically, but I've just found that after I, after it's melted and re hardened, it's not as, it doesn't um, work as well. Okay. So what can we do, like, you know, when we have like these really hot summer days, um, what would you recommend people to do just to keep it for longer? Put it in the fridge um, or just make smaller batches over summer. So just make, like, this is probably way too much to have um, over summer, but over winter it's okay. Um, because then if you make smaller amounts, then you can just... Um, if, you, if it does get hard and it only hap if it happens a few times, if it just happens once, then it doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, then you can just put it out on the garden and then make a new, new um, batch. And also, obviously, the smaller a batch you make, um, the quicker it takes as well. So this is quite a lot, really. Um, but I like to make a bunch of it over winter um, because it's not going to melt and it just means that I don't have to do it as regularly. So yeah, that's some deodorant. Um, hey AJ, um, just one question um, that a few people are asking about is that when do you put the essential oil in? I actually completely forgot. About that. <laughs> so um, it's probably a bit late now that it's in the jar, but you would just put it in when you're mixing all the ingredients together. So I've got here like bergamot, um, orange or lime. And it really doesn't matter what sort of essential oil you put in. Essential oils are great because they're, they're essences of, of flowers usually. And it's just really a preference. There are different um, qualities associated with these essences. So, you know, if you're looking for something more soothing or energetic or, um, you know, whatever you can research. Uh, the different scents, but it's really just like what you pr prefer. So, um, yeah, sorry, I forgot to put it in, but it's just basically four drops in the mixture um, before you mix it in. But I could have done it at the very end as well. It wouldn't have mattered, um, but it smells good enough as it is. Was there any more questions on deodorant? Yeah, and as I said, you just need a really little amount. So something like that. And you just like put it on your fingers and then mix it, put it between your finger and then just rub it onto your underarms. Um, and it is a bit like grainy. It's not as nice as maybe using like a, a roll on or something, but I'm not really too phased and you just get used to it. And then you got a little bit of grainy stuff on your fingers and you can wash it off or you can just wipe it um, and rub it into your skin. Can I ask you another question, AJ? Um, you know, if you're about to go to, let's say, like a flash party where you need to get dressed up, um, would you put it before you put your dress or whatever it is that you're wearing on or how would you do it? Yeah, I always put it on as soon as I get out of the shower. Um, so like when I'm naked, I would put it, I would put it on and then brush off any of the like excess powder. And then, um, then when you put a dress on or, um, a shirt, there won't really be anything on there to get onto your garment. Do you wait a little bit before putting your clothes on or? No, as long as you rub it in. So I think the key thing is like you're putting oil under your, on your underarms. So if you do have something that you're putting like a clothing on that's in special or, you know, um, you want to make sure that it's rubbed in. Okay. Yeah, just make sure that it's rubbed in and you'll be able to tell um, by the amount of uh, product still left on your underarm. So basically just rub it in. You will still feel a graininess and that's the arrowroot. Um, but yeah, just brush that off and you should be good to go. Wonderful. Does anyone else have any questions that have to do with deodorant before we moved into the next product? No? All right. AJ, toothpaste. 
Cool. So um, toothpaste is very similar. Um, I make a really basic one. So I'm just going to use the same bowl. You can switch it out, but it's essentially the same. Um, so again, bicarb, coconut oil. I use peppermint oil. Um, you can use clove oil. Um, you can also, these are optional things that you can add, a stevia, which is from the plant, and that's to make it sweeter because this is a very um, salty toothpaste. Um, aloe vera is also to dull the flavour and you can get that in a gel. I have had people that have just used the plant and um, like uh, got all the, the gel out of the, the leaf and then pressed it through a um, really thin fabric to actually get the juice out. Um, and then you can use activated charcoal powder as well and that's basically for teeth whitening. I don't really use any of the additional extras because it um, just boosts the cost of the um, of the toothpaste. And they're, as somebody rightly pointed out, they're they're harder to find, um, and often do come in packaging. Um, so I know, like the activated charcoal, it comes in tap. Usually, it comes in tablet form or like a yeah, a tablet like as as how paracetamol comes. Um, Aloe vera comes in a tube and the stevia comes in a, um, in a tube as well. So they're all optional. Um, I use just the bicarb coconut oil um, and peppermint essence and that works. Um, if you do have sensitive gums or teeth, you can switch out um, the bicarb for salt. Um, in Australia, we actually have really good salt. So I know everyone's in love with like Himalayan pink salt, but um, obviously it has the carbon miles attached to it. It's um, mined in usually in um, Pakistan where like the um, labor rights and work conditions are pretty poorly managed. Um, so we have amazing Murray River uh, Darling salt and other salt pans across Australia. So this is the great thing that you can find when you go to your bulk food store is, a, is an Australian salt and support um, an Australian salt pan. Um, so yeah, you can switch out the bicarb for salt um, if that's too, uh, um, like, I forget the word. Um, too grainy on your, or um, too sensitive for your teeth. Make sure that it's obviously not something like sea salt, which is really chunky. You want it to be a fine grain. So yeah, let's do it all again. All right, so I've got my measuring cup. Um, and we'll use a third of a cup of uh, bicarb. Just put a bit too much in there. So I'll do a little bit less this time as I've already got toothpaste at the moment. Just quickly for those of you that have just joined in, AJ is currently working on the toothpaste. Yeah, so again, just taking, so when you, yeah, take out the, coconut oil, just try and take it out in little pieces so it makes it easier to um, blend in. And we use, so it was a third a cup of bicarb and half a cup of coconut oil. Hey AJ, um, Someone is asking, do you use peppermint essential oil or just peppermint essence? Or either or? Um, so there, this is a good point actually, because um, essential oils are a really refined um, essence from, from whatever the plant is. Um, and in high doses, it can be poisonous or, you know, it's quite, um, it can be really strong. 
So I use Essence. Um, if you're really concerned about uh, the food safety, doTERRA is a really pure essential oil. So that's the branding there. Sorry, it's back the front. But um, so they're a really good brand that you can buy that is food safe. Um, they are really expensive though. So these ones are about $40 each. Um, whereas a peppermint oil like this, which is a bit bigger, I think this is 25 mils and the others are 15. This is more affordable. I think it's like $18. Um, and because I only use such small quantities, I'm not too concerned about the risk of poisoning myself. Um, but that's something that each of you have to take responsibility for. So um, I use, yeah, essential oils. Um, AJ, do you, where do you find these? Where do you find the ingredients? So the essential oils, um, all over the place you can find. So like um, chemists usually have tea tree and peppermint oil and eucalyptus oil. Um, if you want to find doTERRA, they're usually in more um, like health food or um, it's actually, it's like a pyramid scheme thing. So people sell them, like people are um, doTERRA sales people. So if you look it up, there'll be somebody near you that sells them. Um, I think I just got these at like, yeah, a health food store or um, sometimes like, um, what are they like spiritual shops with like crystals and things have essential oils I've got this, this other one here which is bergamot this is oil garden aromatherapy so there's heaps of different types um, but yeah this one was $25 so that's 25 mils um, yeah so I would just say keep an eye out for them and it's nice to build up a little bit of a collection um, so that you can choose which scent that you like. Mm. So I'm not going to forget this time adding some drops of peppermint oil. So there's four drops. One, two, three, four. And then basically the same thing. So I've just got bicarb, coconut oil and um, peppermint oil in here. If you wanted to add um, stevia or aloe vera or activated charcoal, I would also just add it right now. And then it's just the same process again, is blending it. But it's a bit, um, it's not as much powder this time, so it probably won't take as long. And the coconut oil has warmed up a little bit more. So yeah. Um, as I said, with the toothpaste, uh, probably try and avoid spitting it down your sink. Uh, because the coconut oil can harden and over time um, it can accumulate in your sink. So just spit it into your, um, into your bin or out onto the grass if it's not too cold to go outside. Um, yeah, and usually I just have it again in a jar um, labelled under my sink and I usually use the end of my toothbrush to just scoop some of it out. It's about the same amount. Um, I'll show you when I'm done mixing it into a paste, but it's kind of like the same amount that you would use for the deodorant. And I just put it in my mouth and um, melt it between the tongue, and, uh, between the roof of my mouth and my tongue, and then swish it around and, you, and then brush my teeth as I would um, normally. Um, I haven't, I've been to, the dentist and they haven't said anything about my teeth um, or I haven't had any cavities or fillings in the last five years since I've started to use it. Um, yeah, the main thing would be just making sure that you test, you know, that you just monitor whether your teeth are sensitive to the bicarb as you use it. Um, AJ, there is a question in here about um, turmeric. So there's a lot of like health benefits associated with it. Um, there are some, um, you know, sort of like indications that it can keep your teeth 
really clean. So some people are asking, would you use turmeric? And if so, could it stain your teeth? I've never used it. Um, and I've actually not heard of it being a, um, a teeth cleaner. I would say, I don't know if it would stain your teeth. I guess it depends how long you leave it on there. It's quite a, a, um, a strong uh, spice um, and it does color everything a lot. So I would be somewhat wary to use it as a toothpaste. Um, I would probably do some more research about it before I actually um, used it personally. Um, depending on what qualities it actually says that it, it does. That it does. Thanks. And we have another question as well about the activated charcoal. How much do you use? In the activated charcoal, I just look it up. It is, uh, so one teaspoon of activated charcoal, one tablespoon of um, aloe vera, and one tablespoon of stevia. Um, and also like, can you add any flavors or, you know, like, um, could you add mint leaves or things like that without ruining the product? Mint leaves? Yeah. Um, the problem with adding like more additional little things is just that it can get stuck in your teeth. Um, so, um, I don't think there's any problem with adding it for flavor. Um, I'd just be more concerned about then having to actually get it out of your teeth afterwards. Um, but you can, I mean, the essence is meant to be the, the fragrance or the, the flavor. So you can buy a straight up, um, different essences, but I mean, there are enormous number of recipes to make these sorts of things. And I encourage everyone to really investigate, um, for themselves, uh, after doing this, there's some great, um, websites like treading lightly, um, the rogue ginger, uh, plastic free mermaid, the plastic free way. Um, if you just type into Google, uh, DIY, toothpaste recipes you'll get so many um, and when I started I um, tried a lot of different things and the reason why I say um, Ali about the the mint is I remember one recipe saying cacao nibs I don't know if any of you know what they are but they're basically like really hard little like chocolate chip things but they're not chocolate chips they don't melt and it was like the worst thing to have in toothpaste I don't know what the reason but I was just like eternally getting it out of my teeth. So I would yeah, <laughs> trial and error. Obviously, if you're doing different things, do small batches first so you don't have to waste too much. Um, but yeah, so that was a bit quicker. Um, and then basically this is again, the paste for the toothpaste. Um, here it is, there. So, it really does look the same. <laughs> exactly the same. So you definitely want to have a marker. Um, and you can smell the peppermint. Um, and then, yeah, I just put it in a jar. And as I said, I just use the end of my toothbrush to pull some out um, and then swish it around in my mouth. Um, an interesting replacement for mouthwash, um, if any of you are mouthwash fans, is actually oil pulling. Has anyone tried that before? Yeah, so oil pulling is like apparently a really ancient Ayurvedic technique to kind of flush or drain the sinuses of mucus. Um, and people live by it like religiously. So here's my toothpaste. Um, and basically you can do it for as long as you want. The longer you do it, the better it is. And it's putting a teaspoon of coconut oil in your mouth and just swishing it around like you would, um, mouthwash, uh, event, it'll melt pretty quick. And then you just swish it around. Um, I'd say like the, the, uh, you want to do it for at least a minute, maybe two, and then again, um, spit it out onto like into a bin or into um, the garden. 
um, it's meant to like pull out all the, um, the toxins in your in your gums. And also, I've heard with people that have really congested um, nasal cavities, it's amazing at actually pulling a lot of moisture and mucus from the rest of their their head, which sounds crazy. Um, for a lot of people, it's a weird sensation. Um, so don't get too deterred by that. But if you could do it um, once a week, it's like a really great uh, technique to, to clean your teeth. Um, and yeah, after about 10 seconds, it's just like swishing around saliva in your mouth, which obviously isn't the nicest sensation, but we are um, trying to be a little bit out of the box here. Does anyone have any questions about the toothpaste? Oh yeah, I was gonna show you how much to use. Um, so probably like that much. Yeah. And is it like, um, I'm just gonna unmute people to see if they have um, any questions. I'm just gonna see if I can do this, everyone. Let me see. Um, but in the meantime, um, AJ, is it like the same with the deodorant in terms of like um, storing it and how long it can last for? Yeah, exactly. Um, you just wanna store it in a cool place. If it melts and hardens a couple of times, you wanna make a new batch. Um, I don't know what happens. I think the like melting of the coconut oil reacts with the bicarb and makes it um, not as fresh or something because um, it might fizz up the, the bicarb a little bit. But yeah, just keep it in a cool place. Over winter, you'll be all right. Over summer, it um, will happen more regularly. So you'll want to make smaller batches so you don't have to um, throw out or not throw out, but get rid of as much. Um, yeah, and if obviously like jars like this are really inconvenient to travel with. So um, there's thing like, I know that film canisters are a bit harder to come by these days, but I use those as um, when I travel. So I put the deodorant or toothpaste into film canisters and that's really good because it's got a really good thing. Um, the closest that I can think of it is like off the top of my head is like an eclipse container. Um, so you could try something like that. The only problem is if it melts, I don't think Eclipse containers are pretty, a very, um, what's the word, um, sealed very well. So it might leak. Um, but, um, or the other one is like, you know, those little jams that they sometimes give at um, airports or you can buy uh, in, I don't know, um, like boutique delis and stuff like which are really tiny little jam jars. They're really good for deodorant and toothpaste for traveling as well. Excuse me, can I ask a question? Yeah. Hi, I was, oh, sorry, I was late. I was, I didn't realize a conflict in time with another meeting. Um, do you, can you send us um, by email those recipes? Yeah. So we can experiment ourselves. Yeah. Cool, then we, if we have questions, we can actually email you just in case. Sure. Thank you. Anyone else has any more questions for AJ? Yeah, will you be doing this um this what um Zoom again at all? Because I came in slightly late as well. It's been recorded, so it's Ali been recorded. will, send will we receive a copy of it then? Yeah, as long as you registered with your own email address, you'll get a copy. Right. Thank you very much. So in the next um, few days, I'm going to be sending an email with a link to the recording, a few resources for you to explore, a link to Plastic Free July, and also a link to our um, upcoming activities. We have a few more um, do-it-yourself workshop as well as like some trivia nights and some really cool um, yeah, um, Q&A sessions on um, sustainable fashion. I think the next um, do-it-yourself workshop is one on how to make your own beeswax wraps, which will be very, very interesting. Um, so we have a question from Bobby here. Um, 
that says, has AJ got a social media, media page we can follow? Yeah, I don't have one myself, but I run an NGO called Seaside Scavenge. Um, I can type it in the chat right now. Um, and I would love for everyone to check it out. We do almost weekly waste busters, which are a great way to um, uh, learn about all different types of waste, like plastic waste, food waste, textile waste, and how to avoid it. And um, put it into the correct stream so that it can actually be reused or um, repaired into something else. So, yeah. Great. Really... Done... So, was that Maha? So, have you ever done shampoo? I've never made shampoo. I've made um, soap. But what I do for shampoo is I buy the shampoo bars. Um, they just basically look like soap. Um, and there's a great brand or there's a lot of brands that make them. The one that I'm currently using is from Ethique, which is, mm. I'll type that in here too. Um, they are from New Zealand and they do a whole range of fantastic bar products. You can buy a shampoo and a conditioner um, and they just work in the same way. You kind of lather it up in your, actually you lather it up in your hair um, and yeah just and then it like soaps up like shampoo not as much because um shampoo is not meant to soap up that much anyway uh and then just the same thing leave it in for a little bit um, while you're showering wash it out and then with the conditioner bar if you get that as well i just put that straight into the ends of my hair so from about like there down so it doesn't make the roots too oily um, they are expensive. They're about $22 a bar. Um, I usually cut mine in half or in quarters and use it like that so it um, lasts longer. Um, yeah, but as I said, there's heaps of brands that make them. Ethique's just great because it does come from New Zealand, which is not so far, but it is over the ditch. So it does have some air mileage attached to it. Um, but there are places in Australia that make them too. Don't... Um, I do recommend trying a couple. So if you have one that doesn't work quite well, don't be disheartened because, um, yeah, there'll be one that works for you, but it just uh, takes a few to figure out which one which one does. Thanks. The other thing, actually, is also dry shampoo. Um, so I know some people use that in their hair if they've got, like, really thin hair and um, get really oily hair after like a day after washing. A lot of people use talcum powder. Talcum powder is like the worst thing in the entire world. Um, it's got so many chemicals on it, which is, you know, obviously horrible in general, but people use it a lot on their baby's bottom. So if you know anyone using talcum powder, tell them to stop. Um, and in the recipes that you'll get, there's a dry shampoo mix, but basically you can use anything like arrowroot powder, cornstarch, um, I use it, I just have like an old um, cinnamon jar or like some kind of like shaker jar and I put the powder in there um, and I just put some on my hands and then tip my head upside down and rub it, rub it through my hair um, and that means that I don't have to wash my hair for an extra day. Great. Um, so any more questions before we say goodbye? AJ, you might have typed something in, but maybe you haven't hit enter. I can't see the socials. You might have. Oh, okay. Typed in. Oh, I've been messaging someone looking? privately by. <laughs> Sorry, All right, everyone. Um, so it's almost um seven thirty. Um, as I said before, we will be sending you a follow-up email with all of the information linked to the video, the chat. If there are, were any questions that we were not able to cover during today's session, we will um, respond to them in our follow-up email. So please keep an eye for that email. Just book in to come and join us in our other Plastic Food July activities. But um, before we wave goodbye, I would like to say thank you to May Lee from Responsible Runners for being at the back end, um, helping people and answering loads of questions. And also a massive thanks to AJ. Always amazing. That was really useful 
very, very informative and I'm looking forward to hear about people making their, their own deodorants and toothpaste. So is there anything that you would like to say? Yeah, if you're making anything, please um, share it and tag Seaside Scavenge, we'll share it on. It'd be great to see what you guys um, come up with.